Hey everyone, this is Renee Fry from Talent Q, and you're listening to the Conscious Professional Podcast. More people than ever want to be happy in their career and personal life, but they are going about it all wrong. I'm here to set the record straight and emphasize the importance of prioritizing your mindset. I'm thrilled you're here. The timing for this episode could not be more fitting for today. It's a continuation of last week's episode about relationships. And if you haven't listened to last week's episode, don't worry. You can go back and listen to it after this one. But make sure you go back and listen to it. Because what I shared in that episode about relationships will blow your mind. All right, let's get to today's episode. Spring has definitely sprung. The trees are starting to bud. It's starting to get warm outside. I've been doing yard work, gathering up all the leaves and branches, cutting up and hauling down trees, throwing them into a burn pile. And I cannot wait for summer because that is my favorite season up here in Wisconsin. And today we are going to be talking about weeding gardens. Fitting, right? Instead of weeding your actual physical garden outside in your yard, we're talking about weeding the garden of your life. This concept of weeding the garden is about removing the weeds that exist in your life and plucking them out. And I'm going to get super specific though and be honing in on weeding specific relationships from your garden. As I mentioned earlier, this is an extension of last week's episode. Last week's episode was all about relationships and we're going to continue down the relationship road. I specifically am going to cover weeding your garden of toxic people, people who don't lift you up, people who don't make you feel good, people who put you down, people who don't support you and your magnificence. I know you're thinking, but Renee, I've known that person since kindergarten or that's my family member. Settle down. I'm not saying you're never going to see them again but let's continue on. As we age, we all become wiser. Well, I hope we're all becoming wiser, right? Through our experiences, we learn more and more every single day, every single month, every single year, growing and advancing in our awareness, our relationship with ourselves, knowing more about who we really are, knowing more about the relationships of the people we spend time with and those we hold dear in our lives. As we grow and evolve through our lives, are we taking the time to reflect on who we're surrounding ourselves with? Are we taking stock of the people we hang out with the most? Think for a moment. Who do you spend most of your time with? Are they coworkers, your family, friends, internet friends, friends you've known for a lifetime? Who do you spend most of your time with these days? Sometimes as you evolve, you realize you've changed and you may need to spend less time with some of those people in your circle or completely stop having a relationship with some of them. And this can feel really difficult and may nearly feel impossible, especially if some of them are part of your family. This is how I felt when I first evaluated my relationships with my friends and family. And if you've known these people your entire life or if they are your family, it will feel painful. It's emotional. Just hearing me say this to you, might be ruffling your feathers, and I get it, but just hear me out, okay? You don't have to weed everyone out, but you may want to consider removing the ones who are toxic, the complainers, the negative Nellies, the ones who never ask you about anything about you, the ones who always bring the drama, 
the ones who put you down, the ones who are always in competition with you, or the ones who don't lift you up when you're together. Our greatest power as human beings is we get to choose. We get to choose who we spend our time with. Time is our greatest asset and it is so very, very limited. Being mindful of the people we surround ourselves with and how they can influence us can help us make conscious decisions about the relationships we nurture and maybe the relationships that we leave behind. Two decades ago, when I dove in the deep end of the pool of personal development and having a growth mindset, my husband Dustin and I realized there were some people in our life that didn't make us feel good when we were around them. Some of them were part of our families. Tough stuff, right? We don't get to pick our families. And I don't want you to think it was a lot of our family. It was a couple of people in our families that would bring us down, drain our energy when we saw them. And as we continued on our personal development journey, we both realized the importance of placing a higher value on our time. Time is something we never get back. And our time here on this planet is very, very short. We cherish our families, but something had to change. If I leave a family gathering and I'm crying in the car on the way home, something's wrong and it isn't good. Dustin and I had tons of discussions about our families and the people in our lives and how to figure this out. And we did it together, which made it 10 times easier because I had a partner in crime. Someone to support me through this And I supported him through this too. What we decided to do was weed the garden of a couple of our family members. We made the decision that we would see them at holiday functions, but we would no longer actively reach out to them and try to spend time with them proactively. That was our decision. If they happen to reach out to us and arrange a get together, we would decide on a case-by-case basis in the moment. This is what we decided as a team. And after making this decision, which I'll be honest, in the moment it felt harsh because it's something we hadn't done before. I had doubts. Like, can we actually do this? Once our decision was made, I actually felt relieved. There was a sense of relief in my body. I could feel the tension evaporate from my body, which is how I knew the decision was right for us. My emotions always guide the way. And keep in mind, we never said anything to these family members, so they have no idea we made this decision. To this day, they still don't know. It was a very difficult decision to make, but thankfully, my husband and I were both on the same page. Go Team Fry! We decided this eight years ago, and today we are still happy with our decision because time is so limited, and we both want to have an extraordinary life, feeling the most abundance, feeling the most happiness, and feeling the most love, and making the most time of that we have in this world. And I'm sure you've heard the saying, time heals all wounds. And what this means is with the passage of time, emotional pain or grievances in a relationship will naturally fade away and heal. However, this isn't always the case. Whether time can heal a relationship depends on the nature of the conflict, the willingness to forgive and change, the communication involved, and the past patterns. Sometimes relationships you have may not be salvageable and time may be needed for people to heal and for each of you to move on separately. And that's okay too. This reminds me of when my dad didn't attend my wedding. Boy, did I hold a grudge against him. I actually wanted to disown him, but how could I do that to my own dad? 
I was angry at him for this for years. I never let him live it down. I shot jabs any chance I could get. It took me years to finally have the courage and awareness to forgive him. And when I did, I had a conversation with him, letting him know that I forgave him. And I promised him I would never bring it up or mention it to him again. And I've kept my word ever since. Once I forgave him, I felt relief in my body. This conflict backpack that I was carrying all these years was my creation. This conflict in our relationship was my choice. I chose to feel the anger. I chose to act like a little shit when I saw him. I chose to keep bringing it up and rubbing it in his face over and over. And where did this fucking get me? Nowhere. So when I set fire to that conflict backpack by forgiving him, That backpack immediately turned into a pile of ashes and disappeared. I felt peace. I felt relief. Why did I do this to myself for all these years? Then I had to friggin' forgive myself for doing that and finally move on. What a relief. If you have a relationship with conflict like mine that I had with my dad, I encourage you to communicate with that person how you feel to see if you can move past the conflict. Get through it faster than I did. Think about all the time I missed out on enjoying my dad's company, but instead was a total angry asshole to him. I missed out on special moments we could have had together. I definitely learned my lesson on that one. Now, If there's a conflict with someone and you communicated with them about it and you still can't come to a resolution, it may be time to move on. And guess what? That's okay. Sometimes in life, you need to let people go. When you do, you may feel some relief like I did when I decided to see family members only during the holidays, certain family members only during the holidays. Sometimes people in your life come in for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. One of my best friends in high school, who was also in my wedding, we are merely acquaintances now. And I'm grateful for the close relationship we once had. I cherish the fond memories that we made. But the truth is, we grew apart. We lived in different states while we were both in college. After college, we still lived in different states. And we grew to have different interests. I saw her at a high school reunion and we chatted it up and we had a total blast together. And we met a couple years ago for lunch and that's great. We had a nice time together. We're not BFFs anymore and that's okay. I still adore her, but our lives have gone in different directions at this time. Throughout our lives, people will come and go. People evolve just like our interests do, just like our priorities and our values. They may change over time, and this leads to people drifting apart naturally. I'm sure if you think back to childhood, to now, you've had people you were really close to that you no longer have a relationship with. I have another friend from elementary school. We would sleep over at each other's houses every single weekend when we were in middle school. Every weekend. I haven't seen her for 24 years now, but that's okay. We're still friends on Facebook. She doesn't post much or comment much, but I still have all those wonderful memories with her. And I think about her from time to time, and that's great. It's wonderful. I'm sure You've all heard me say this quote before. It is one of my all-time favorite quotes by Jim Rohn. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about the five people you spend most of your time with. Really think about this for a minute. Who are the five people you spend most of your time with? I want you to think about the common traits you have with each of those five people. It could be similar incomes, net worth, weight, 
physical characteristics, personality characteristics, like driven, outgoing, shy, humble, money ideals, such as good with money, frugal, spender, anything at all to describe them. See, when we spend more time with certain people, we can pick up similar traits. We can pick up similar behaviors and attitudes. This phenomenon is called social influence. Social influence can happen consciously or unconsciously. We as human beings have a natural tendency to mimic the behaviors of those around us, especially people we feel close to or people we admire. And when we spend time with people, we are most likely engaging in similar activities and experiences. And over time, these shared experiences can lead to shared perspectives. One of the most fascinating things to me is group behavior, crowd behavior. I studied this in college and you know, when you go to a concert and the lead singer starts waving their arms side to side, and then they have the whole stadium waving their arms side to side, right? They are creating this phenomenon. This is an example on a massive scale, but on a smaller scale to the groups you belong to, you start to adopt their beliefs and ways of thinking too. As human beings, we always want to gain acceptance and approval from others. We like to fit in. So for example, you might find yourself talking in a certain way, treating people differently, talking more negatively or positively, or even not speaking up when you'd like to around different groups of people. If your friend is complaining about something, you might join in and start complaining about something. I know this has happened to me. I've been there. Where are you trying to get in your life? What's next for you? Who are you trying to become? Who's that person you want to be in the future up here? To get to that next level in your life, you're going to need to find people at this level that you aspire to be at and surround yourself with them. You can find these people everywhere, but you must be aware and be intentional looking for them. They may be at networking events, fundraising events, different groups in your community. Where are these people hanging out at that are at the level you want to achieve? the level you want to get to. Let's just use income for a minute as it's easy for all of us to visualize. If your goal in the future is to be a multimillionaire, which I love that goal, you got to find out where the millionaires hang out. If you don't know where to start, you got to start going to new places like fancy restaurants or fancy bars. You could stay overnight at luxury hotels like the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons. You even might want to take up golfing. These are just some of the ideas we all know about where millionaires hang out. Go where the people are who you aspire to be like. And I'm not saying ditch all your family and friends, but I'm saying be strategic about who you choose to spend your time with. If you have people who support you, who cheer you on, who make you feel good when you're together, then by all means, keep spending time with them. These people are the gold nuggets in your life. Cherish them. We were raised with certain beliefs passed down by our parents. This holds true for how we think and operate in relationships too. Let me give you a personal example of what I used to do. In the past, I was the person who If my friends didn't ask me to go do things and spend time with them, I'd stop asking them too. I expected it to be a two-way street. I asked and initiated getting together with you. Therefore, you, my friend, should do this too. They should then ask me to get together with them next time. This was my lame belief in my head. Then one day, One of my coaches I was working with taught me that everyone loves being reached out to. Think about this. You love it when people reach out to you. 
You love it when someone asks you to do something with them. You love it when people think about you and reach out to you. Let's go see a movie. Let's go get a drink. Let's go get a coffee. Let's go for a walk. Let's go grab a lunch. Let's go shopping. It's because you're being thought of. We all love it when people think about us. Everyone loves being thought of. And what I had to do was squash my bullshit belief about this whole two-way street thing. I asked you to grab coffee, so now I have to wait until you ask me to go for coffee. Tit for tat. Lame, lame It's so absurd when I think back on it. The fact is, if I have fun with this person and I enjoy their company, why would I punish myself for not asking them to spend time with me? Why was I doing this to myself? So damn stupid. What an unhealthy belief I had all up in my head, right? So I had to unwind that lame belief and turn it around to move forward. So my new belief is, if I want to spend time with someone, I reach out to them. I ask them and I get together with them. And it doesn't effing matter if they don't do the same. It doesn't matter if they don't reciprocate. It's totally okay. Whatever is going on in their head preventing them from reaching out to me, that's their deal. That's not mine. So I'm going to keep reaching out to people I want to spend time with. And I'm going to have a ball with them. And I'm going to enjoy my life. I think back and kick myself about this because of all the missed opportunities to hang out and spend time with those people that I enjoyed being with, who I adored. Again, I had to forgive myself for doing this. And I believe there was a reason for me to learn this. Now that I've learned, I've changed my belief and my behaviors have changed and I won't have missed opportunities again. Yes. This was a huge shift in my beliefs. Now I reach out to anyone I want to spend time with because my time is so limited here on this planet. I stopped keeping track of how many times people reciprocated and now I'm the initiator. Whether or not they reciprocate or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they never ask me to do something. If I enjoy spending time with them, I'm going to ask them to spend time with me, period. See how this could totally change the game for you in your friendships? I'm sure you have at least three people you're thinking about right now that you could totally reach out to and have a wonderful time together. But instead, you're waiting for them to be the ones to reach out and time just keeps slipping away. Our beliefs are so powerful. They are like anchors in the water, dug deep into the sand, hooked in there. I invite you to swim down and start tugging on that anchor. Get that anchor back up to your boat so you can unwind all your bullshit beliefs that are holding you back from freeing yourself from them. Beliefs are a thought we think over and over and over again. Every belief we have is a decision. We can change our thoughts and our beliefs. We are the thinker of our thoughts because we have this incredible gift of choice. So if there's been someone you've been waiting to reach out to, screw it. Take the first step and ask them to get together. When you weed your garden of relationships, I know you will feel uncomfortable at first. If you haven't ever done this, it may feel hurtful, awkward, even out of character. And that's awesome. You are right where you need to be. You may be wondering what the other person will think if you stop hanging out with them as much. If you never tell them, they're never going to know. When you weed your garden, what you're saying to the universe is I am open for new people to come into my life. New people to help me 
get to where I'm going. And you're betting on you. When you allow yourself freedom to choose who you will spend your time with, you're also telling yourself that you love yourself and believe in yourself. Okay, so the key points from today's episode are you are the average of who you spend your time with. It's okay to let go of relationships in your life that don't serve you. Don't let your old beliefs get in the way of relationships that still have time to flourish. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Please share this episode with someone you love and go make one change to be better than you were yesterday. Live your life with intention. I believe in you. I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible. So if you would, please leave a five-star review. See you next week. Cheers, everyone.